This project is perspective practice. It is how to set up one point and two point perspective. The objectives are in one point perspective, demonstrate correct use of a horizon line, a vanishing point, and orthogonal lines. And then in two point perspective, demonstrate correct use of a horizon line, two vanishing points, and orthogonal lines. And you'll demonstrate application of perspective drawing techniques to block letters and building structures. Why are we doing this? We are learning these techniques because they are applicable to drawing and painting realistic building structures in any setting. Following the simple rules will make houses and buildings look believable in your future drawings and paintings. Also, following the perspective rules for block letters gives you a style to use for future lettering needs when making signs and posters. The materials to gather are your sketchbook, a ruler, and a pencil. The first perspective technique I'm going to show you is one point perspective, and it's how to make block letters. So I'm just going to um, kind of demo two letters. One is a more angular letter, and then one will be a more circular letter. And you can choose to do your initials for your practice or whatever letters that you want. Um, but I'm going to do two letters that are very different on purpose, just to have it be a useful demo for you. So I'm going to start by making a horizon line really high on this sketchbook paper and make a vanishing point on it, which is just a dot. And I'm demoing this in the charcoal pencil this time because I want it to be really dark and visible in the video, but just use regular pencil <laughs> for this if you don't want to do charcoal. So for my block letter, I'm going to do an M because my first name is Molly. And when you make block letters, err on the side of using a ruler if you can, just because they're going to turn out better. Okay, once you get your block letter done, then you need to connect each corner to this vanishing point right here. And some of them won't end up showing, um, but some do. Just err on the side of connecting everything right now and then you can decide which ones to take out. Okay, so those are all the lines that show on this M. Um, and you can see that uh, the lines are receding down to that one point. Or... This is a trick for drawing a round letter, and that is to use um, straight lines whenever possible, and then round it only when you need to round it. So check this out. So when you do the lines to the vanishing point from a curved letter, this is where it gets a little bit tricky. So put your ruler on your vanishing point and then just stop when your um, ruler barely glances the curve. So check this out. That is the line I'm looking for. It's actually, um, if you were uh, in geometry class, it's actually a tangent of a curve. So this is the other one. There we go. And that's all we really need from this O um, because anything else can be done kind of with um, shading or something. Um, but this is a basic effect of one point perspective letters. This is one point perspective uh, buildings like a house. So I'm going to do a horizon line pretty high again, and I'm going to make a vanishing point over here this time. And I'm going to use my ruler 
to just draw a very basic first grade house. I'll show you what I mean. <laughs> Very basic first grade house. So now take each corner and connect it to the vanishing point like this, just like we did with the corners of our block letter. And you get like what looks like a house shooting out, but if you take your ruler and then maintain a nice vertical parallel, you can decide how far back you want your house to go. So you can kind of get that line right there. And then same idea of maintaining a nice parallel. And this is where clear rulers really come in handy. You can mimic that same angle of the roof line right there. And now, um, I need to go get a ruler, but you can erase out these lines and you're left with a house that makes sense in perspective. Pretty neat. So, um, when you add some features to the front of your house, all you need to worry about is uh, verticals and horizontals. Like just at a door. Maybe a window. And then if you want to add any texture to the roof, like with shingles or a window on this side of the house, you need to keep the vanishing point in your mind like this. For the sides of a window, you just keep them vertical. But then for the top and the bottom of the window, you actually need to use the vanishing point. See, it does connect all the way to here, but I'm not gonna draw that whole line. overdrew a little bit. And then for shingles, you could use the vanishing point as well. Okay, so that's a very basic house where we used one point perspective to set it up. Lastly, for this demo, I'm gonna show you um, two point perspective and this is best for making the corners of buildings and it works well for cities too. So check this out. Make your horizon line a little bit lower than we've been making it on the last two. And then we'll make a line like this and this is going to be the corner of our building. So this is what I call the kite step because we're going to have two vanishing points and you need to connect the bottom of your line to this vanishing point, the top of your line to this vanishing point, the bottom of your line to this vanishing point, and the top of your line to this vanishing point. So it looks like a kite, but temporarily. So this is gonna turn into like a tall city building. And what you can do is keep a nice, Parallel vertical, parallel vertical there, and you can take out the horizon line from going through the building because it's really going to shape up as a building here pretty soon. And it'll even shape up more if I erase a couple of these lines out and then the building will really pop. But now you can see that this is um, a building that looks like it recedes into space appropriately. And when you're doing details on a two point perspective building, whatever you put on this side of the building needs to go to this vanishing point, And whatever you put on this side of the building needs to go to this vanishing point. 
So it's similar to what we did with the um, window on the side of the house in the last drawing. So for example, if you wanna do a door, you could have your, your door top lined up with that vanishing point. So I'm always gonna use that point when I'm working on this side. And then for the sides of the door, it would just be verticals that are all parallel to. But say you wanna do some windows. See how I'm maintaining with the vanishing point the whole time. And I suggest using the clear ruler that I provided because it's the easiest for this project. Okay, so. That's just kind of like a demo of how you can use your imagination to do some details on a building in perspective. Um, so I'm gonna repeat the same process on this side, but use this vanishing point. Okay, so there's a basic little building and you can also add more buildings in the same perspective. And so add a couple more on each side. And you can decide if you wanna make the building be connected to this building, like sharing a wall or have like an alley behind it. And I'll show you the alleyway first on this side and then I'll show you the other way on this side. So make a new line that'll be a corner line. And then you basically repeat the process. See, this is lined up over here. So it's the kite step again, but I'm not drawing the whole kite this time. <laughs> and see, that's lined up. Bottom is lined up. And you should definitely keep the bottom lined up because um, if this is gonna be believable to all be on the same street, it does need to be lined up on the same line for the bottom. Then you can decide how far back into space you want your building to go. I'm gonna take out a couple of the extra lines so it's not so confusing looking. But with this building, you've created like an alley between these two buildings. And um, if you do wanna do kind of a street, use your vanishing point. So I'll kind of create a street here and kind of make it a street corner. So that's one way to create kind of a building. Um, there is another way that's even easier and a lot of buildings actually share walls. And so if you were gonna draw another building to share this wall, you could just make a nice vertical line, keep the, the bottom front going. We'll make this one, um, the top of this building shorter than this building just for interest because it looks kind of cool if your buildings have different heights. But let's just add a few details here and there and um, it becomes a little city scene pretty easily. <laughs> so this side of the building, this vanishing point, maybe do a door. There was a really easy way to do um, skyscraper type buildings, and that's to just make floor to ceiling windows on them. But I like to make every building look a little bit different because in cities, usually every building does look a little bit different. Um, so there's a basic little building over there. Now we can add maybe a door here.
So again, for this one, we're using this vanishing point. Kind of a line right there. So we have a basic little city shaping up here. So I invite you to kind of use a basic setup like this and show at least three buildings. And you can add other details if you would like to, to make it look kind of like um, a full city is going on. If that's a street, you can also add some other details, like sidewalks and stuff. Um, just have fun with it. Use your imagination. You get used to adding lots of um, orthogonal lines. <laughs> So have fun with it. I just want to see that you tried block letters, one point perspective and two point perspective, and that you got some things set up correctly. But again, it's more about the techniques and the setup than anything. So I hope you had um, fun and learned something.